Every single day after work for a hundred days, I cut a graduate bob. Every day. At the end of the day. Every at the end of the day. At the, end, column, at the end of a long Saturday. A long Saturday, <laughs> you're like, oh my god. And then you get the mannequin head out. Welcome to the first episode, we can call it episode, yeah, I think so, uh, of Talking Air. <laughs> Talking Air. <laughs> Talking Air, because of Talking Ads. <laughs> yeah. The band, check it, if you don't know it. By the way, it's not a classic post, it's not a podcast, it's not an interview, it's more like a nice chat with a, a friend, a colleague, and yeah, an endless source of inspiration. Mr. Ben Brown. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, I'm, I'm really excited. I love the format. <laughs> nice and relaxed. Um, I think it's great. And, and where are we at the minute? We're yeah. in Barcelona. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to not be inspired, yeah. isn't it? And not to be excited. <laughs> um, tomorrow, yeah. I mean, it's that the calm before the storm. We've got our yeah. class tomorrow. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. A two-day seminar, a two-day seminar. And we are, as always, extremely excited to met a band to, to collaborate once again after Milan and um, yeah for me he's uh, an amazing artist is uh, some kind of benchmark uh, uh, during my career I started to follow him since I was very young I bought his book uh, back in the year oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many grammar mistakes and spelling mistakes and yeah but the, a career is made by also absolutely by, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, let's do a quick introduction of, about you, about yourself, uh, even if, it, if, it, if it's not an you know what? It's, it's actually, I mean, I'm, I'll never miss the opportunity to talk about myself. You know? so <laughs> it's, uh, well, I, I, think, I think what's interesting is that I'm, I'm like, like the vast majority of the industry. Mm -hmm. I'm in it because I'm very passionate about, uh, about the craft mm -hmm. of, of hairdressing, hair cutting, whatever we kind of label it as. I'm really, really passionate about learning more about it. Okay. And I'm sure um, everyone that either watches or listens or anything to do with this, they're probably quite similar to us, where yeah. we teach because we love to learn. Of course. And my kind of backstory is that I was a salon floor hairdresser, which I'm very proud of. I'm very, very proud that I worked for two decades purely on the salon floor. And, and in that period, uh, Alexandra, I developed uh, an understanding of service, you know, what it was to really serve the client, serve people. And at that point, I didn't have any real skills cutting hair. Mm -hmm. And I worked for one place for a long, long time. It was from the age of 16 until I was 31, actually. One salon. And I thought, I'm sure most people are the same, like, I was always fully bought. So I assumed, like, I must be really good at cutting yeah. hair. And then when I had my own salon, uh, which was kind of the natural progression mm -hmm. for me. I had my own salon and I was teaching a member of my team how to do a long layered haircut. Okay. Very simple, long concave layer. And I'm indicating in the early points of this that we start with a vertical profile section and all the subsequent sections pivot from the crown, right? Mm -hmm. And she asks a really good question. She asks, well, why did the sections pivot? Like, what's the significance? A quite simple, sec uh, quite simple question. A good question. Yeah, good one. Like, I'd like to understand straight this. To, straight to the point. I had no idea, though. <laughs> that was the problem. The problem was, as good as a question as it was, I didn't know how to answer it. So I, I realized at that moment yeah. that I wanted to learn. It was no longer enough, I suppose, mm -hmm. to be fully hot. Um, I wanted to be credible to myself as a hair cutter. And... I suppose I, I just looked at Sassoon straight away. Mm -hmm. they, they always seem to be like the Jedi Council of hairdressing to me, you know? So I, I kind of couldn't really afford, sadly, um, to go to London okay. and, and do their classes. And I think that good education costs money. Yeah. And I just didn't have sure. the money. Uh, we'd both agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but we just, I just didn't have the money. And because the sound couldn't afford to have me away you see yeah. it needed me there so i started to retrain uh, by i bought the book the sassoon abc mm -hmm. and i bought the turning guy future classics and i read them cover to cover mm -hmm. and i didn't understand the word pretty much 
And I remember feeling a lot worse at first. Mm -hmm. At first, the first step of retraining was realizing I wasn't even as good as I thought. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. And I share that with a lot of my learners. And I tell them that it's absolutely fine if you don't understand what I'm saying. Because it's only where we're starting, it's not where we're finishing. Yeah. We're starting at this point now. And I often say that my goal when I teach anybody is not to give you something to work on. It's actually to give you something to work towards. Yeah. So I'm going to expose you to this, this way I see hair cutting. And just to wrap it up quick, because I realize I've spent nearly 10 minutes <laughs> no talking about something pretty different. But, but I, I actually wanted to learn one haircut first. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to retrain on every haircut going or learn everything, I just focused on the graduated bar. Yeah, and you I told practiced me that. it. You told me. It, it's, and, it, and this and one is crazy. <laughs> every single day after work for 100 days, I cut a graduated bar. Every day. At the end of the day. Every, at the end of the day, at the, end, column, at the end of a long Saturday. A long Saturday, you're like, oh my God. And then you get the mannequin head out and you start to, uh, and they're terrible company, mannequin heads. So then, and we then I start, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we can't, we're only looking for a sponsor, you can't. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not. And, and I would actually uh, film myself cutting them. That's the key thing here. Yeah. Now I'd advise any, anyone that's trying to learn anything, whether it's playing the piano, it, whether it's you know woodwork or whether it's hairdressing, film yourself and watch yourself back. Interview to critique yourself. Because if you, if you were watching somebody work, if you were watching me work, you'd be able to coach me and help me when you see something that you need to help yeah. me with. That'll bend. On that particular section, the way you're grooming the hair is incorrect, whatever it might be. So I would write this list out of things that I could see were wrong. In the view that next day you see Alexandra, I would actually have that list tacked to the mirror mm -hmm. and I would be doing the haircut with all the negatives, all the things that I, I saw wrong. Trying to, I'm trying to put them right. The funny thing is, and I'll say this to everyone who watches or listens is, the better you get, the more you see. <laughs> you see, I still have a list now. I still have things I'm trying to improve on. Yeah, I, and it's an endless journey. And that's the beautiful I, I, thing about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, that's why we are uh, both in love with this craft. I mean, I, one thing I love about this is that I can learn from somebody at the start of yeah. that journey. And I can learn from someone who's been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. There's no merit badge. There's no, what I, you don't measure people how you think you're going to measure them. And that's one of the things that keeps me, my tank very full yeah. with passion for this industry is that I never know. I, I never know where I'm going to learn from next. Yeah. It's fabulous. And that's why basically I started to, to teach because I, as you, as you said, I love to learn. And I think it's, it happened to you tons of times to learn something new from your yeah. student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's mean, crazy. I mean, I looked what you said last time we talked and I, I actually, I actually rip you off all the time because I use it on every class. <laughs> I say, the only stupid questions are the ones you take home. Yeah, definitely. And then I think you said this. I'm pretty sure I got this from you. I think you said, um, when you ask me a question, I learn from you. Yeah. Because we, as educators, can't be prepared because we can't read minds. No. So we don't know what you're going to ask us. And then we think of it from your perspective, which only adds more value to our experience yeah. as an educator. Yeah. It's a, it's a totally different uh, kind of job compared to the salon floor but yes. I, but as the same you need to be able as a salon style as a salon stylist to connect with people that's yeah. the hardest part and at the end of the day uh, both situation because I, I, I continue to to work also as a salon stylist uh, I manage clientele doesn't yeah. matter for me if it's in a salon floor yeah. or inside a class but the most uh, important thing to learn is how to m deal with people, yeah. how to, to create connection with people. Because I know that you was, uh, as you told me, but I know that you was the busier stylist in your salon mm. because you are creating, making connection. Yes. With people to understand it's their needs. That's very true. That's very true. The, the, there's a definite human element that people want. Yeah. And I think that what separates any any great haircut is the person 
And it's, I remember a while ago, a friend of mine was having some surgery, a minor surgery. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, my surgeon was amazing. Goes, <laughs> and I, and I, I asked him, I said, how do you know? You're unconscious. <laughs> like you're not, you're not watching him and yeah. seeing what he's doing. <laughs> And, he, and you, what it's made positive you was unconscious. Let's hope he was unconscious. Um, what made that what, what, so? What made that surgeon amazing to my friend was him. Yeah. His personality, his confidence. He walked in. Even, and a, said even to, in a dramatic situation yeah. or, or an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. He he just said to him something like about his golf. He goes, "The only thing I want you to worry about is your golf swing." Yeah. Because you're going to have to heal for six weeks. Mm-hmm. And and you see now. 10 surgeons would all perform the operation the same, but my friend would choose him every time because of his bedside manner. And I always say that my uh, passion for people, um, I always say everybody is somebody. Mm-hmm. Everybody yeah. is somebody. We, yeah. and everybody is how I do it. Someone's auntie, mother, son, or yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're significant in somebody's yeah. life. And, and everybody's money's hard earned. So when, if I accept that they're going to have the haircut by me, I accept the responsibility that there's more than a haircut that's going to take place. There is a level of experience. And, and you know, to some people, spending whatever, let's say it's 50 pounds, 50 yeah. euros on a haircut, they might struggle with that. That might be where they go, you know what, actually, I, I might have to wait another month to get my haircut. So people often used to say this, I, they thought it was about value for money with a haircut. Yes. And I, I, but I actually said, I don't know if it is, because I think they want luxury. Yeah. Because when, you know, you know what, you know if I finally get something for me, mm-hmm. if I finally spend some money on myself, I want it to be luxury. Yeah. And that, just, that doesn't mean that you've got to have an expensive coffee. No, 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 no. That comes from us. Yeah, yeah. That, it's a, it's a, person, it's a personal perception, Nancy. It's actually the hardest thing. Yeah, is to teach someone to talk. I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you're so right. That's a good point. And a question that I have for you that pop up in my mind back in into our conversation, I never ask it to you. Do you ever miss the salon day? Yes, I miss being part of a team. Oh, okay. I I miss being part. Of, I loved working uh, in the first salon I worked at, which I worked for 16 years. I loved being part of a team. I loved being. I loved contributing towards uh, everybody's success. You know, like being an assistant was probably one of my happiest times. Yeah. I probably felt the most successful as an assistant, actually. Yeah. Because I felt like my contributions benefited everybody, whereas as a stylist, they predominantly benefited me and the salon owner. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely miss being around other hairdressers. I definitely miss. Uh, you know, we could make the whole podcast about, uh, our whole conversation could be about things I miss. But I would say that the evolution, my own evolution has taken me in this direction. And, and, and I'm always trying to fit, um, so, is that my stomach rumbling? No. <laughs> so, um, I'm always trying to fit a client self back into my life, but it's, it, there's no natural fit anymore. Okay. With a lot of online education, traveling and things. I, I, I do anyone's hair that asks me. You know, if someone, I, I, I'm almost offended if a friend doesn't ask me now. I'm like, why wouldn't you ask me to cut your hair? But you said you didn't want to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did say that. It does sound like me. But I do miss it. You, I, but I'm, the thing I miss most is I don't really miss, I miss that busy day. You okay. know, the, really the buzz when you're running behind. Yeah. And. Everyone pulls together. And you don't miss also the, the her- everyday possibility to create connection with people, with, your, with, a, with a new client? I, mean, I kind of think I get that, mm-hmm. but with students, with other yeah. hairdressers. So like, so like sometimes you, you'll have a class of 10 people, but that's 10 totally different people. Yeah. Definitely. And so it's a bit like I'm doing 10 clients at once. So then I've got somebody that walks in incredibly confident and they, they require a different bet. They, they're mm-hmm. like two or three people that are very nervous. They need a different person to, to that person. And you've got somebody that's quite confident and they need more coaching. And you might have someone who's had a bad experience and they need more support. I mean, it's, it's that, um, I'm sure I read a book where they, they had the, what's called the matrix or metrics of leadership. Mm-hmm. 
and you you have people where you have to delegate yeah so if I've got someone that's really really nervous um, you know I probably need to delegate to them and just explain in depth what's expected if I've got somebody and then once you've delegated that's when you coach yeah you've explained it you know in full to them you coach them and then they'll, they'll come a, a point where something goes wrong in the hair court, which is what I always hope happens because yeah. if the, the little things that go wrong mean I can go more in depth, that's when I support them. There's, that's the nurture. And then when they get really quite good, that's when you just kind of delegate. Yeah. You just explain. Like, you know, like if, if you were doing a one length bob with me, I wouldn't be checking and it. And I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> you, 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 you would smash it. I yeah, wouldn't check it in the same way I would somebody who's just started out because I respect your ability. Yeah. And I, I, you just would delegate, oh, this is, the, this is my tip. You'd share a tip. You wouldn't sort of go into, let me check those millimeters. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not sure if I'd be happy to do a man's haircut in front of you. I think I'd be dead nervous. <laughs> I think I'd lock myself in the bathroom. <laughs> I, I, he doesn't want me to cut his hair anymore now. <laughs> he, he said they wait for you. <laughs> and where did you find your daily, um, your, your daily uh, inspirations uh, to, to push your, yourself always uh, far in the industry? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think it changes. Yeah. I think it changes. I think it's, it's I'm very industry centered. Mm -hmm. with where I get inspired by. So, like, you know yourself, you're, you're quite an intellectual person. And he, he is. He, no. You are. And, and you, you'll know a lot about music. You know a lot about fashion, subculture, and things like this. See, I don't, you see. So I get very inspired by the craft. Just the craft. Yeah. It's very industry-centered. So, like, Gianni Scamacci, who we both yeah. love. Um, Definitely. Uh, Stanley Lau. Yeah. You know, I, Richard Ashforth. Um, yeah. Thomas. Oh. Yeah. L Lindor Incre Salmon from Australia. Um, these are people, when I see their work, I see things that I can't do. And then I see that as, yet, I can't do that yet. You know, sort and then of I start challenge, to practice. Yeah. yeah. But then the main thing. you yourself. A hundred percent. It's always you v you. Yeah. It's always you v you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure. My main inspiration comes from the fact that I've put a lot of um, expectation on myself mm -hmm. to achieve things that aren't for me, therefore my family. No one in my family has ever really been an entrepreneur. Mm. And no one in my family, and this isn't a negative thing, has yeah. ever really had anything to pass on, you know? Mm. So I'm gonna break that cycle, Okay. you see. I'm, I'm not trying to be the first millionaire in my family. No. But I'll be the first one to break that cycle. Um, so I'm gonna buy a farm for my wife and my daughter. Mm -hmm. It's not going to have loads and loads of animals. It's just going to be a beautiful home in the countryside. Um, it's in the north or northeast of England is where I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it in two years' time. That's it's been a plan for a long time. So I know that you see, if my goals were just for me, I could be selfish and go, I'm not that bothered. I don't really want to work that hard. Because they're not for me, because it's for my little girl and my wife, you just find another gear. You just find another gear and you become invincible really because you know yeah. when you get that in your mind, this is now for the happiness of these two people. You, you, do, you do kind of get quite inspired by that. In the same time, you get quite panicked. You think, oh my God, <laughs> am I going to achieve this goal? I mean, there are nights when there, there, there are times I'm thinking, oh, is it going to work? But of course it is going to work. You know, I'm going to make sure it works. But that stops you from being complacent. Yeah. You know, I think. Well, as soon as the goal is, is it for you, I think it'll work. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You are as the, the first hairdresser of your family. No, um, my mum was a hairdresser. Okay. And then, bless her heart, she gave it up when she had children. Okay. Uh, she wants to be with her children, which is that very amazing of her. I'm very grateful yeah. for that. Um, but I'm, I'm the first um, one in my family, I suppose, that, you know, that has built a business from scratch like I have. And, but I, and, I mean, obviously everyone in my family were very working class. Mm -hmm. You know, we were all, we went to work in factories and things. Uh, and I'm very proud of, 
very, very proud yeah. of my family, you know. But obviously, you know, like my daughter is totally different <laughs> really? to, to any of my family or she's totally different to how my friends were at that age already. Because you can just see that the, the upbringing is so different. And the biggest goal I've ever had was, you see, I'm very fortunate that I met my wife when I was young. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 22 Hello. and I'm 44 next month and I'm we've been together 22 years Whoa. been married for 18 and that's one of my things I'm most grateful for is that I met her so young so then when you meet the, the ideal person at the ideal time you want to build the ideal life yeah. and you know I thought owning a salon was the way to achieve that that's what I thought I thought a salon is going to get me that house in the you know, in the countryside, yeah. it's gonna get me to Disney and all these things, because my wife loves going to Disney. And, and it didn't work like that, and that's okay. And I would say that I did fail as a salon owner, and that's okay, I, I'm not embarrassed by that. Um, I did fail, but you know what? I'm not a failure. You, you know, you know I, I say this, and I, this is a joke, but I, it, it <laughs> makes sense. Um, I also cannot beat Usain Bolt in a sprint. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that is, doesn't mean I'm a failure, does it? It just means it's the wrong race. <laughs> so owning a salon is the wrong nice race. Nice one. <laughs> See what I did there? I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> you seen Bolt. I've been with chess, but not uh, not sprinting. <laughs> Something where you can sit down with air conditioning. I fancy my chances, but if it if it involves, I mean, I put my trainers on and pull a hamstring these days. So uh, yeah. But stepping back to to the salon. Uh, uh, to the salon day, salon experience, and to all those professionals that leave the, the salon routine every day, how much is important for you uh, to develop strictly technical skill for an addresser? If you're going to be a because salon we are, floor. Sorry, because we are both strictly uh, yeah. precision cutting related. Yes, yes. I mean, I mean, I was a very successful salon floor hairdresser for a long, long time uh, before I retrained. Uh, you know, I bought my first house when I was 22. Not outright, I got a mortgage when I was 22. And that was, that was before I even knew about round, square, triangle, you know. Um, I wasn't a technical hair cutter until I was probably 37. And that's mm -hmm. when my business closed. So I would say that it's, it's vitally important that, that you are confident enough to be innovative. So innovation means that you're going to be able to communicate with a client and solve a problem for them. Yeah. So I think being innovative is, is probably the most important thing for a salon hairdresser. Being technically very proficient, you could be boring. Yeah. You, you know, we, we said earlier in this conversation how important the human element is. Mm -hmm. So you could have someone who was like the most technically beautiful hair cutter in the world, but the clients might not like that person, how they are as a person. It can, it, it can work from a single person. Yeah, but I think to be innovative is vital. I mean, yes, innovation comes from a sense of mastering the fundamentals, but I hadn't mastered the fundamentals. I mastered what I thought were the fundamentals. Yeah. And then, so if a client came in and they said something along, along these lines to me, um, I want layers, but I don't want layers. You see, that sounds ambiguous, mm -hmm. but actually, you and I would be able to solve that. But we, we would solve it by creating a haircut that wasn't here before. Yeah. And that's innovation. I don't think that's, that's overtly creative or artistic. I think we're working from a pragmatic point of view mm -hmm. and clients giving us something specific. And we're using that client's experience to create something that's bespoke to them. So I would say being innovative is probably one of the most vital things. Yeah. But I mean, you do need to know your stuff. Yeah, you, you do need, need to, to. You do need to know what you're for, doing. For sure, I totally agree. <laughs> I to, it, it definitely helps. I, to, I totally agree uh, to your point of view. Uh, I come from a family uh, of a dresser. Uh, my oh, mom, wow. yeah. I didn't know that. That's brilliant. No, really, I didn't know that. No, my family is still is still in the business since 1922. Oh my God, that's yeah. what, what my an my, 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 my mom, she's still in the business. She's wow. a, sal a, salon, uh, a salon owner. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I belong from a, an hairdresser family. Uh, and of course, it's, it's not wrong. It's not a, a, bad, uh, a bad point of view. Your sister's a hairdresser too. Yeah, yeah, with me. So, I bet it's amazing to talk about <laughs> if you're having dinner. We are Italian. 
Yeah. So everything is family business. I love it. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Oh my God. <laughs> so uh, I think that uh, I started inside uh, our, our family salon uh, and my mother, she's not that technical, yeah. but she's great in great connection. Yeah. And as, as you said, she's very innovative. She's able yeah. to understand the customer needs, uh, yeah. how they daily manage their hair, yeah. based on their routine, basically. So yeah. I learned a lot from her, from my family environment, about how to treat with people. Yeah. But definitely, I need to, to approach to an haircut by yeah. some strictly rules. They are not yeah. invented by me, yeah. by you. We, we all know where they come from. But I think that the technical side of the of the of the craft is very important because it uh, makes you able to spread your wings mm. across creativity. It does. It does. I, I totally agree. I think that you can't teach creativity. No. You know, like, at you, all. Know, you know, like you can't you, you can, teach. You can, um, you can help people improve their own creativity. Yes. It has to be the right. That's so cute what you just said because I think that helping someone understand the, the fundamentals yeah. and establish a level of mastery in any craft yeah. in the fundamentals gives them an underlining sense of confidence because they know that they're, they're competent, you know, really, really competent. So that gives them, in my opinion, the, the, the understanding of hair, the confidence to be innovative, and then the creativity comes. Yeah, because some people might perceive what you're doing as creative, but you might not be. You might be going actually the, the person I'm working on, they've got a really difficult crown area, and the hair texture is this, and there's that reason. So suddenly, what looks to be overtly creative, you're actually explaining technically to them. Everything is everything can be broken down technical when you think about it. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. It's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> One last question. I love in, it. In a world, because we, we, all, we all know how our industry moves, and in particular how it moves uh, in the last few years, in a world of uh, newcomer educators, mm -hmm. what do you think about this new wave of, uh, of uh, upgrowing yeah. educators all over the world? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, obviously. I, I think it's good I, I, for I, a certain. I, I definitely think everyone has a right to teach. Yeah. Everyone has a right to learn. Education is not an exclusive, it's an inclusive thing. Uh, exactly. I, I would just say that I think whenever you're teaching anything, if you're just teaching what you've learned from somebody else, yeah. it won't work for you. It won't work for you. When I, when, whenever I teach, it's authentic to me. Mm -hmm. I, like like you, would, you would pay to go on one of your classes. Right? You would pay you to cut your hair. I would buy my book, I would do this because I wrote them for me. I wrote, wrote my class for me. I always start with me first because I need it to be credible to me. I've yeah. got to sell it. I've got yeah. to market it. Yeah. So what I'd say is as long as they have something to say, as long as they're moving the conversation on, I think it's fabulous. Yeah. But if, if it's a case of where they've been on a couple of courses and, and just taken information from the people and then just wrote, you know, change the logo, then obviously I would say that's fine, but eventually, what are you gonna do when it moves? Yeah, you and know? it moves fast. Yeah, fast it moves very fast. And I said this recently, I said I never ever worry about being relevant, ever. I worry about being authentic and credible to myself. Yeah, yeah. I, because I, every day I, I, I need to wake up and look at myself in the yeah, mirror. Yeah, I need to respect myself as a professional, and I do. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I do, and that makes me credible to me, which makes me always be relevant. Because people will see that authenticity. Yeah, definitely. People aren't stupid. <laughs> well. Yeah, definitely. Well, <laughs> we're not sure. <laughs> we all know <laughs> We all but, know uh, somebody. But, uh, but in our industry, uh, because of social media, I think that uh, if you are not uh, trustable, if you, are, if you have nothing to say, uh, your career as yeah. a salon uh, dresser mm. or yeah. an educator, it, uh, it will be shorter as yeah. uh, as also, you know. I mean, if you, if you kind of, I would say if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, is you see people who go, 
I, I don't want to do men's hair. I'm nervous to be men's hair. I don't want to do this. I always think that whenever I've, whenever I've done something that has really scared me, like traveling overseas, yeah. scared me first, it's always moved the needle more. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I would, I, I welcome any educator. I, I think I'm quite new to education. I've only been doing like six years, you know, but when I think about it, I've been teaching myself for my whole career, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, I, I feel like I, no one has a monopoly on education. No, definitely. And I welcome anybody and I would give help to anybody because I've had lots of help. I've had lots of things go right for me. Yeah, and back in the era, it wasn't so common to, to, to have someone that But, but I would just you. advise them. Yeah. I would just say straight yeah. away, write the course for you first. Yeah. And you'll be dead excited for it. And then you'll be authentic to yourself. Yeah. And that's all you can be. So, this interview, <laughs> this... I don't like interview, this chat, unfortunately, it's over for the camera, but... We should have started drinking before. <laughs> we would have gone on for five or six hours. <laughs> the ad is the, the the true. <laughs> true. <laughs> we would have had to edit it right now. Yeah. Talking air at the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that would be so funny. <laughs> so thank you for your time, Ben. Oh, thank it's, you. It's always uh, it's a pleasure. such a huge it's pleasure. It's always a pleasure. To, 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 always a con pleasure. To, to spend some time with you, because uh, I, I deeply respect you. I, I, I love what you do. I love... Your point of view about the industry, about the craft. So, uh, thank you well, so much. Well, the feeling's very mutual. Thank you and yeah. thank to everyone for listening. See you soon. Bless you. See you soon. Maybe tomorrow for the course. Tomorrow. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yeah.